chefs, what red flags should people look out for when they go out to eat? If a restaurant has a huge menu, it's all frozen. Cisco, it's what's for dinner. Aramark, but for sure man. If they got lobster and pancakes on their diner menu, maybe one or more of those dishes isn't freshly prepared. Never order pancakes more than 100 miles from the shore. Yep, and never order seafood within 100 miles of the shore. Can someone explain these for my friend? He doesn't get it. We fly our pancakes in fresh each morning. If the area is busy, but the restaurant is empty, that's usually a bad sign. Otto, empty neighborhood and busy place. Usually a hole in the wall place that makes the most fire food. Took me three solid minutes to decipher Otto to mean on the other hand, I'm old. Sometimes I get these acronyms immediately because they follow the flow of the thought. This one was easy for me. SMH took me a while. I'll see your SMH and raise you the classic lol which I first thought was lots of love. Ask where your oysters come from. If they don't know, you don't want them. Works for most seafood. I ate at a sushi place in a landlocked state a while ago. I was pretty nervous about how fresh the fish would be, so I asked about it. The waitress launched into a long explanation about where they get their seafood, how long it takes to get there it's flown in daily, apparently there are special seafood flights for all the restaurants in the area, and the whole procedure. I was really impressed, and the food turned out to be amazing. Just as good as coastal places and definitely better than some more conveniently located restaurants I've eaten at. Apparently people have taken this as I don't know sushi fish is frozen. Of course it's frozen. If a restaurant has a one page menu that's usually a pretty good sign. It means their line cooks have become specialists and can usually mail all the dishes listed. Conversely, if a restaurant has a giant, multi page menu that's a gigantic red flag. The longer the menu the better the odds that you're paying to eat a boiled back frozen meal. I see you too, have been to Chisa Steak Chisa Cake Factory Carrot I live in Philly so that's where my autocorrect goes carrot to apparently CF makes almost all of their food from scratch, in house. That does not excuse the Michelin length menu. I have it on good authority that they should only have one item on their menu. Apparently, everything but their cheese cake is made from scratch at the restaurant. Cook for a small Mexican restaurant here. I always look for how the staff interact with each other. If they all seem to enjoy being there and coordinate well, more often than not it's because everything is running smoothly and they have a good system, which usually means they know what they are doing and you can expect good food. That's how it always is for the smaller, family-run restaurants I frequent anyway, which I believe always have the best food. This is why I will always eat at Waffle Houses. Despite the status as a ghetto I hop, the staff at every Waffle House I've been to always seem to have a great time working with each other. If you want a ghetto I hop, check out the one down the road from me. They had to stop being 24 hours due to frequent fights and robberies. The den is across from there seems to be doing fine. Pictures of food on the menu that clearly aren't from the restaurant. I designed the menu for a restaurant and left spaces for the pictures. They said they wouldn't send any and told me to take pictures from Google. I have never eaten there. I would like to add I had no idea what some of these dishes were. My favorite was house special, but they didn't know what that would be. I was told to add something nice. Food photography isn't easy to do well. Staging the dish to look attractive, taking the photo before the stuff cools down too much, appropriate background, color balanced and lit well, etc. Not something you can do with your camera phone and have it come out well. I have a family member who's worked in multiple different restaurants and they always advise me never to get drinks with ice because too many places don't keep their ice machines cleaned because it's so often overlooked compared to other kitchen equipment. Rana Kitchen can confirm. When I started they only cleaned the ice machine and soda machine when black stuff was in the Mountain Dew. While I was there, it was bi-weekly for the ice machine and nightly for the soda machine. Ugh. I still remember when I was night manager at a sandwich shop and decided to clean the soda machine. It was probably the first time that thing had ever been cleaned. And the floor drain below it was like nothing I've seen since. Ugh. I went through a Taco Bell one time and wound up with a Mountain Dew that tasted funny. 
they told me they had just cleaned the machine and that might be leftover cleaner. A few days after that I was talking to a friend that worked there that told me they had just found a dead mouse in it. Not a chef, but I just took a chance on a restaurant today and the chefs were sitting, legs up, right next to the front door as I walked in. No one but staff and me there. So, according to how my stomach feels, probably that. I walked into a New Mexican restaurant the other week and almost immediately walked back out. The parking lot was in shambles, the lights inside were off, the ceiling was lousy with water stains and the menu was so jam-packed I didn't even bother to read it. We have a sushi place me where the chef gives you free samples of future dishes. This usually means they take pride in their work and want to see people's reactions before committing it to the menu. I have one of those places near my house too. Best sushi place ever. This is more of a green flag than a red one. Yeah I can't wait for the thread tomorrow. What are some green flags that you're about to eat at a good restaurant? Checkered flag. They won. There's a Chinese restaurant in my town with a sign out front that says clean food. And fresh. I still can't help but wonder why they would bring that up unprovoked. Maybe they recently immigrated and don't realize how sketchy that sign makes them seem. There's a nation restaurant in my hometown whose sign advertises ingredients with no other context never fails to make me laugh when I see it. Come to our restaurant, the foodies. Honestly if you love that stuff you could plan an entire trip to China just to experience the amazingly bad menu and place translations. Restaurants I frequented here include Uncle Seven Snail Powder and Dumpling Criticism. And the menu item translations are unbelievable. Not a chef, but worked in food a lot. Carpet. Yeah it's quieter and doesn't get slick, but it is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. I saw them pull it up when they remodeled and put in more carpet. Vacuuming only goes so far in a restaurant and I know they never ever shampered it. I clean carpet for a living. And yes restaurants are often disgusting. The stuff we pull out is usually black slime because of grease and grit. Most of the people we clean for try their best to get clean regularly, but even then I find it hard to eat at those restaurants. The smell of restaurant drain water is unreal. And if you own the company they want to do it in trade, so they can have you out every month. Was a great idea, until you are disgusted by the place, and don't want to eat there ever, and the trade value is worthless. I once saw a waiter spill ranch on the carpet then proceeded to get a broom and dust pan in an attempt to sweep the ranch up. If there is different cuisines on the same menu, it usually means it's not gonna be good. I don't trust that people can do Japanese and Italian in the same kitchen. I'm suspicious of Japanese Thai restaurants. I don't know why people think those two cuisines go together, they are totally different. I guess it is just me that hasn't had good luck with Japanese Thai restaurants. But I travel a lot, so I've definitely noted specific restaurants that people have mentioned, thanks. Yeah, all kind of Asian cuisine mix restaurants are odd. They are all totally different cuisines with different flavors. That's why I hate Elephant Bar they have special dishes from different kinds of cuisine, but none of them are especially spectacular. If I want amazing sushi, it'll go to a sushi place. If I want good pho, it'll go to a pho place. I don't want to go to a place that does everything, but does it all mediocre. I've worked in restaurants for over a decade, a couple years in the kitchen and the rest is pho. If your server's response to how is the item seems disingenuous, that's a big red flag. We know what goes on in the kitchen, we know the complaints, and we know which items to stress over when we deliver them. Servers who pause or seem uncomfortable with that question generally equates to a menu full of stuff we won't eat even as a free shift meal. A good sign is when servers hang out and eat at the restaurant post shift. Generally we are getting a discount, but not free food. If we are spending our nightly tips on it, it's worth it. Whoa, thanks for gold kind stranger. If employees try to argue with you about food quality in order to dissuade you from sending something undercooked back, just leave. It means they have a cook who can't take criticism and your chances at getting a sneezer are greatly increased. Back when my husband and I were dating, we went to a Thai restaurant, ordered broccoli and noodles, and when the dish arrived, we saw there were lots of black specks all over. Looked closer and they were aphids. Grossed out, we called the waiter over. 
He took a look, and tried to argue with us, that it was black pepper, not aphids. Dude, there were obvious legs and wings. He wouldn't budge, so we walked out, and never went back. I'm very sorry sir, I will be right back with the bug spray. Or it's an hour past close, the grill is off, and the steak which you ordered medium well, and is medium well is too pink, and you want it well done. I really rarely disagree with a guest, if they want something cooked up, but I have my limits. This is late, but I clean kitchen exhaust systems. If you walk in a restaurant, and can smell grease walk out, that means the place isn't clean. From the exhaust system to cooking equipment. We clean some places, where grease drips off the hoods onto cooking surfaces. For my first ever post this blew up. Thank you all. No, this isn't late. I think this is great thank you stranger. A $4 steak is not a good steak. Where can you get a $4 steak? It might not be good, but I might just have to try one out of sheer curiosity. The Waffle House in Tallahassee College Town has steak, my friend ordered it out of sheer curiosity 2 minus 1, 10 recommend. Not a chef, front of the house. When my boss the owner used to host, and people would complain to her about the hour, wait on Saturday night at 7pm, and then threaten to leave, she would tell them, if the restaurant you choose, does not have a wait on a Saturday night, you may not want to eat there, and then turn her biggest shit eating grin on them can I add you to the list. Yes it wasn't uncommon for the place I worked at recently, to have a minimum of a 40 minute wait on the weekends and people would try to get all uppity about it. Like yo, you came here for a reason. So did everyone else. Calm down or just leave honestly. Explain Olive Garden. If a place has an hour's wait for seating, they are not going to be hurt by you leaving. In fact, it'll make pretty much everybody happier. Go ahead and go away. If you walk into a restaurant, and hear Gordon Ramsay yelling at the staff you probably want to leave, unless it's one of Gordon's restaurants of course. Why would I want to leave? Listening to Gordon Ramsay yelling at idiots is practically dinner and a show. If you order a meal, that should take a long time to cook, and it comes out very quickly, it's been pre-cooked. This applies mostly to quiet nights. If it's quiet, and it comes out immediately it's just been sitting there. But if it's busy then there's enough turnover, that it's likely alright, and chefs are just being prepared. Unless you're at a BBQ joint. Can't exactly make pulled pork in 15 minutes. To everyone telling me how long it takes to smoke meat I know. Well if you go to a BBQ joint you know and want it to be pre-cooked. I'll take an order of brisket and a rack of ribs okay, come back at 8am, they'll be waiting for you. And if it takes longer than 15 minutes we also have a problem here. Why is a 8 to 12 hour smoke taking 4 than 20 minutes to plate? Waitress here, if you see any food coming out that's messy and there's sauce all over the rim of the plate, etc, it's likely to mean that the chefs aren't putting much effort into their meals and they therefore will not be very good. All the chefs at my work find it so important that everything is presented well and I agree, so if they miss something I'll check the plates and point it out which they always appreciate as it reflects well on them. This can also mean Expo isn't doing their job of making plates presentable. Thank you. That is Expo and the food runner server's job. Team effort. If the chefs are slammed, they don't have time to wipe some sauce off the side of a plate, that's what Expo is for. In my restaurant, Expo is always one of the chefs. It's smart because they know for sure how the food is supposed to look, and if one station gets slammed they can jump on for a couple of minutes to help, or if they see it's about to get slammed, they run and get help. If there are too many items on the menu, if you have 50 combo choices, man you know half, that stuff is frozen, old, canned etc. Nothing is gonna be great like an In-N-Out burger. It's all gonna be met. That's pretty much been the first change Ramsay will make when trying to fix a restaurant, is cutting the menu in half. Quality over quantity. Gordon Ramsay was the first thing I thought, if when I read it. One of my favorite places to eat, is a small shop called Johnny's Beef in Illinois. They only have two branches. They sell hot dogs, Italian beef, Italian sausage, and french fries. You want a burger? Go someplace else. Chicken sandwich? Hit the road. Salad. We can mix some giardina and sweet peppers together for you. Best Italian beef sandwich in the city. 
If the bathroom is a mess, the kitchen is a mess as well. Not always. Usually the people in charge of cleaning the bathrooms are not in charge of keeping the kitchen clean. At least where I work there are separate people that clean the bathrooms and the cooks clean the kitchen. That being said the bathrooms were never a mess. It says something about the management. This is not true both should be clean, but it's not the same people doing both jobs they don't correlate. A local Chinese buffet never cleans their glass doors. They are greasy and smeared from top to bottom. Those doors are the first thing you see and they leave a bad first impression. I refuse to eat there because if they aren't cleaning those, I have to wonder what else they aren't cleaning.